Well, while we're here filming uh, the recap show episode seven, news broke that Vladko might be resigning. And we don't know if that is true or if it um, has any merit, but uh, we thought we would take an opportunity to say if, if that is true, um, what would you like to see, Tobin, from the next coach, the next leader of the U.S. Women's National Team? Yeah, I think it's a it's a strong signal. I think it's one that that we all expected uh, because that result was not up to the standards of the U.S. Women's National Team. Um, and now we look forward, right? Uh, I think there's a couple things, and we can we can work through them. But the first thing is we have a quick turnaround to to the Olympics. Um, you're going to need a short-term lens the way you're looking mm -hmm. at this. We want to win the Olympics. We need to put ourselves back on track, back in the category that we want to be in. Um, and then we have a long-term focus, right, towards the next World Cup. Um, in the short term, I think the number one thing is player identification. I think we need a leader that has a keen eye and understanding of what's required of an international player. Okay. What does that mean? What, what is required of an international player? What it means is you're picking from a player pool, particularly a player pool that primarily plays in the U.S., in a certain style, in certain systems, in a very American um, style. That is not translated to international football necessarily. So you need somebody, a leader with a keen understanding of the system that is going to be played, how to implement the system, and which players are best for the system. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean who are the best players, mm -hmm. who's scoring the most goals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's everyone talking about. It's not that at all. Yep. You might as well just close your eyes, and you might as well <laughs> think to yourself, what is required for the U.S. women's national team to be successful? What is that player profile? Then you identify that player. You have to see it. You have to feel it. And then you have to see how each one of those pieces is going to integrate with the other piece. So I love that. I think the point you're making is it's not always the best players. It's the right players. And that's yes. player identification as a key part of a short-term strategy to turn this team around um, for yes. the Olympics coming up. Let's talk about, uh, you, you always talk about super factors um, and what those are and what how, how does the coach um, identify those and uh, make sure that the team has what they need to win when it comes to the short-term strategy. What has made the U.S. Women's Nash team successful is a clear identity and understanding of what is the team going to do to win the World Cup. And we could have said those if you asked what 2015 super factors are, what 2019 super factors are. We know those because they were taught to us over and over again. And the way that we practice was towards those super factors. So what you're saying is you want a coach that's going to come in and identify the super factors for the group and team that is ahead. Not that the super factors are always the same. Yes. Identify them and then build a team to be successful with them. Yes, I mean, there are clear super factors that you have to, you don't want to take away the best pieces of what the U.S. Women's National Team are. So uh, somebody with an understanding of, we talk about the DNA of a national team player. It, it's, it's very clear DNA. You don't want to just scrap the whole thing. You take those pieces. Um, Give an example of what one U.S. Women's National Team super factor is. Um, being mentally and physically strong. I mean, I think we're a country that relies heavily on our athleticism, on our physicality. That should be like at the bedrock of what we do, and I think it should only get better, better, better. Great. There's no reason to ever settle for where we are in that. I think we can always get better physically. And then another super factor could be like set pieces if we have the Organizationally, right I think organizationally is a super factor for us. Our set pieces have always been top. We've always had players that have either been great servers of the ball, great at finishing within the box, um, and on the flip side of that, really hard to score on mm -hmm. and set pieces. And at an international level, that's non-negotiable. Love that. Okay. So we have talked about player identification. We've talked about super factors. What about culture? What about the way that a coach makes you feel? I feel like when it, when we're talking about a tight turnaround, the most important thing is buy-in, player mm -hmm. buy-in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to see a coach that not only do these players believe in them, respect them, but they want to fight for them. You can tell coaches that players 
want to play for. And it could be for a variety of reasons. You know, we, we take England right now, Serena, like the, the players say she's a mastermind. You know, like that's one word that can be used for a coach, right? Um, you look at playing for Tony. Tony is just like, he, he's a teacher. He teaches, and, and actually for this group of players, when I think of what's important, because there are so many young players and so many players that have not been at this level and have not had this responsibility, I do think you need a teacher. You need somebody that is not developing with the players. That's where, where we, we cannot have somebody that is learning at the same time that the players are learning. Um, and, and we need somebody that I think is a proven winner. You have the best team in the world. There is no excuses to not go out and get the best coach in the world or the best fit for what we think the U.S. Women's National Team needs. Love that. Okay, so, I mean, that is a tough job. You're coming in, you have less than 12 months. Um, so you've identified some things that you want to see from the coach in order for short-term success. I think that this is the hardest job in the world. It's a hard job, right? But then you talk about the long-term strategy yes. and what's needed to make sure that this program stays at the top for the next decade, for the next generation yeah, of players. Yeah, we talk about the bedrock that you're building on. You're building on the best mentality in the world. Mm -hmm. Literally, the best mentality in the world. You're building on the bedrock of the best athletes, the best physicality in the world. Now, we, we heard Jill talk about you know, when she picked out Rose, when she picked out Mal, and she said, that's the next evolution of this team. She picked them out at a young age, and she brought them into the fold, and she developed them into the system, slowly developed them into the system. That's what's needed. It, it, you can't just wipe okay. it out and bring We're something We're talking new. about player development now. Player development, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. And that's, that's having a key eye to what's going to be needed. So it's like you, you ask, what's needed to win the Olympics? What do I need to do this in this next year. Then you zoom out and you say, what is needed from a developmental perspective to win the World Cup? And those two answers are gonna be different. The near and the long are different, mm -hmm. but they have similar kind of flavors. And in order to be able to answer one of those two things, like you still have to have an understanding mm -hmm. and an identity of what you're doing. And an example of that, in my opinion, is in when it comes to like the Olympic player selection, having one eye on players that might not be able to play a big role at the Olympics, but they might be playing a big role in the World Cup. Yes, I mean, you make a great, great point. I mean, in the, the Tokyo Olympics, 2020 and 2021, whenever that was, <laughs> I was- You say that every time. Yeah, about I, I, I know, it's like such a weird time. <laughs> still upset about still it. Still upset about it, yeah, because <laughs> I think you bring up a good point. I was disappointed in the player selection during that world championship because in my, in my opinion, I'll take one specific example. There's no reason why Sophia Smith's first world championship was this World Cup. Why didn't she come to the Olympics? When she's not only to be the best. And, and then she was expected to be one of our best players. That is not the U.S. Women's Nash team. That's when you know the transition has not d been done well. There were a couple indications. Sophia Smith, that should not be her first world championship. We should never rely on somebody going into their first world championship to be the best player on the U.S. Women's Nash team, to be the one that's going to score all the goals. That's a bad transition. Second, we should never have a player coming in with one cap starting the first two games of our World Cup. And that's no offense to that player. That's a bad transition. And for me, th there's a process and, and there's a building process. And, and we miss that boat. And, and there are consequences to missing that, that process. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a good handoff between the veterans and the younger players because there was all of a sudden this division between veterans and younger players when actually that should be a beautiful marriage. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better on the national team than giving like then opening the door for the next generation. What I love about what you're saying is actually like unique. Like not every country has this ability to mentor and pass down the torch. But the reason that we do is especially right now, the veteran players are, you know, two-time World Cup winners. Yeah. So there's a unique X factor that we have mm -hmm. that if utilized properly, it's a torch passing that should prepare young players to uh, you know, be the, the best again. And I think for you, especially having been so young on the team, like you had that experience, yep. um, but maybe you haven't had it in that same way as a veteran um, when you would have been you know, playing with Sophia Smith on the national team, yeah. taking reps side by side with her. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is experience yep. and also kind of the the resume that you want to see, kind of like the standard of like, this is, we should go for no less. Yeah. I think international experience is key for this job um, for a couple of reasons. For the identifying factor, identifying what, what an international style player is required of them, um, but also from internationally being able to understand what camps like, what FIFA windows are like. It's very different than club football. Mm -hmm. You're given a short period of time, we're talking about one, two weeks, that you have to utilize every second of it towards a very specific goal. And if you m aren't laser focused in that process, you're missing the mark. Mm -hmm. And every single day, you're shaving down time. I, I can remember our preparation where our fields were set up perfectly. Mm -hmm. Because if we missed a minute or if we didn't get one rep, that was one thing that took away from us winning a World Cup. Mm -hmm. That's the precision that is needed in this process, especially when we talk about looking forward to uh, Olympics next year. The precision has to be immaculate. And that comes first and foremost with player identification and group identification and identity of this team. How is this team gonna not give up goals? How is this team gonna score goals? How is this team gonna dominate games? Who are the players? Who are the subgroups? Who are the relationships? Who are the leaders? Having such a laser focus. Yes, can you bring in more players to figure it out? Yes. Are there already players that have checked those boxes? Yes. But there are too many players right now that have been brought to this World Cup that haven't even checked a box. They had a whole World Cup and they haven't checked a box. Okay, so. so you need a coach that has an understanding of the international game, has a respect for the international game, and knows how to operate in international FIFA calendar windows in order to perform. Love it. I think that, you know, obviously there's a lot of noise um, from the World Cup and from the U.S.'s um, performance. And um, I think one thing that we have talked about is, you know, people are saying like, I'll be the savior, I can do it. But the truth is we don't need a savior, we need a strategy. And um, Who said that? You said a that. wise person yeah, said yeah. that? I was trying to get you to say it the whole time, but... We just... don't need, we don't need a savior. We don't it's need a, a savior, line. we need a strategy. It's a great line, I think it deserves to be in the show.